So once the diagnosis of primary hyperparathyroidism has been made based on your calcium and your PTH level that are drawn concurrently, we look at all the associated symptoms as well as other diseases that have been caused in the body such as weak bones, kidney stones, or kidney failure. Then we perform an ultrasound in the office to help identify any bad parathyroid glands or other structural issues such as thyroid nodules or thyroid goiters. We also perform a flexible laryngoscopy, which is a small camera that goes in the nose to evaluate the voice box prior to surgery. This lets us know if your nerves are working before the surgery in case there are any issues. Additionally, I'll request a study called a SPECT-CT scan, which is an imaging study that's used in adjunct to the neck ultrasound to help identify any bad parathyroid glands, or more importantly, where they're not, just to make sure there are not some down in the chest. At that point, we'll schedule surgery. Surgery is done as an outpatient. It's an in and out procedure, and you're home in just a few hours. There's no drains or clips or sutures to be removed. Everything is dissolvable and easy to manage. Skin glue goes on the skin surface. This way it's waterproof, so you can shower the night of surgery if you like. You just have to be careful not to scrub it, and you do have to take it easy for a week. Now, one bad parathyroid gland that shows up on ultrasound can take anywhere from about eight to 10 minutes to remove. It can take a few more minutes to look at the rest of the parathyroid glands if we decide we're going to do that, and then it takes a few more minutes for your blood levels to come back to normal. Now, what blood levels go back to normal? Parathyroid hormone. It's a unique hormone in the body that has a half-life of about three to five minutes which means if it starts at 100, five minutes later, it should be 50. Five more minutes, it should be 25, and so on. Now the calcium doesn't correct for approximately 24 to 36 hours. So we won't know how, how well that has gone down until probably a day or two later. And that's okay. Once we know that the parathyroid hormone level has gone back to an adequate range in surgery, we know the calcium will follow. So after the surgery, you wake up and go to the recovery room, you have a little bit to eat, and you go home. Most people don't take pain medication the night of the surgery. Most of them take just Tylenol. Although at home, you'll have an option to have pain medication if you need, as well as some anti-nausea medicine. 